listen to our podcast, that follow us on YouTube, connect through our website. You are unbelievable. You're amazing. I hear from you and appreciate that you're connected. And we honestly, we lo- I love technology because I love that we get to extend our relationship. You don't even have to be in our buildings to be a part of our family. And so I so appreciate you being connected to us w- through church online. Come on, everybody. Let's give it up for those. Come on, let's like really give it up. We love you guys. It's awesome. Welcome. Welcome. You are a part of our church family, and so we just welcome you in. I want to start with prayer. Can I do that? I just want to go before the Lord and just call on his name. Father, I love you. I thank you for this day. I thank you for this church. I thank you for these people. Father, I thank you for the opportunity that we have uh, to be in your house. Father, to hear from your word. And I just pray that today, Lord God, that you would move in us. I pray, Father God, that you would speak to us. Lord, we are not here to be entertained. Uh, We are not here, Lord God, to feel good. We are here, Lord God, to grow in you. And when that happens, it feels good. And I just pray, Father, in Jesus' name, that you would have your way in all of our lives, no matter where we are in our journey of faith. I pray that you would help us today to take one step closer to your heart. I ask all these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Amen. Amen. So we've been in this really great series that we're, we're calling Relational Roadmap. Uh, this is not a romance series. We are not talking about uh, husbands and wives. We're not talking about, you know, th- what it looks like to, to go woo somebody, sweep them off their feet, you know, propose and live happily ever after. We're just talking about how to actually just relationally connect with people. How many of you know that God designed us to live in relationship? And we're per- you're perfectly designed to do things with other people. None of us, not one of us, was designed to, to go at it alone. It doesn't work that way. In fact, God said it in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. He said, it's not good for man to be alone. It just isn't good. Uh, he's designed us to work together, to interact with other people, to, to build relationships. And I really, truly believe that uh, in our church in 2020, that, uh, that our word, I feel like what God is trying to do is bring people to a place of breakthrough. It's, it's what I truly believe. I think it's what God wants for you. I think it's what God wants for me. I think it's what God wants for us as a church family. He wants to see us transition into breakthrough, like something to go somewhere we've never been before. And here's what I want to say to you. I believe that some of you are one relationship away from experiencing breakthrough, just one. That the right kind of relationship is what you need. It's not a relationship. It's the right relationship. It's the right kind of people. And so we're just trying to bring some things to you that help you to understand how to better connect relationally uh, with others. So let's get started. You ready? Uh, if you've got a worship guide if, that you were given when you came in, if you want to open that up, there's a sermon note insert in there. I uh, would love for you to be a note taker if that's your flow. Uh, and if it's not your flow, it's perfectly fine. I honestly, whatever you, however you receive Best is how I want you to posture yourself to receive. So if that's writing, write with me. If it's not, it's perfectly fine. But I want to start in this verse uh, in 2 Timothy. The Bible says this, again I say, don't get involved in foolish, ignorant arguments that only start fights. Come on, how many of you have been guilty of that before? Where are you at, right? Verse 24, a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but must be kind to who? Who are we supposed to be kind to? Everyone. And must be able to teach, watch this, and be patient with, everybody said the last two words with me, be patient with difficult people. That's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about like the tough relationships. How many of you guys ever uh, known somebody that it was, that was just hard to love them? How many of you guys have ever known somebody it's hard to like them? It's different, Right? I'm a people person. I love people so much. All, I really always have. I think as long as I can remember, I loved interacting with people. Uh, the older I get, the more I embrace it, the more I love it, the more I appreciate it. The older I get, the more intentional. Apparently, I've become really, really known for this word intentional around our church. I hear people say it all the time. But the more intentional I become with my relationships, I'm very careful. Uh, here's what I've learned, that it's not just relationships that matter. It is right relationships that matter. And so I think about all my relationships. I think about the way that I interact with people uh, who are on my level, like my peers. And I think about the, the kinds of friends that I have around me and who, who am I spending time with and, and who is building me up and, and, and who is a voice into my life. I, th- I think about the people that are ahead of me, like mentors, you know, the people that I aspire. Like, man, I really, there's a quality in that person that I really appreciate, that I really like, or that I, that I really want to see become a part of who I am. I'm very... 
uh, intentional. I think about those relationships, and, and I'm very, very careful. Once I select somebody that it's like, man, I, I really think I can learn from this person, which, by the way, I can learn from every person, I, just by the way, from everybody. But there are certain people that's like, I, I want to hang out with you more because there's something about you that I think I can, I can deposit into my own life that's going to make me a better person. It's going to make me a better friend to other people. I, I do it uh, on another level. I have heroes. These are people, I don't know their names. I've never met them before. But man, I sure aspire to have the qualities that they have or have the influence that they have or be able to perhaps pastor the way that they do or lead the way that they do. And, and so I, I'm intentional. I, I am very selective on, on who I'm drawing from, how much I'm drawing from them, and, and, I, and I even classify what I'm trying to draw. So there are certain, I'm just kind of letting you into my head a little bit. I'm going to be very, very uh, open book for you today because this is something that's very, very real for all of us. And I'm just going to kind of let you into my world, someone, how I think and how I do it. So, so I'm even selective on what I'm drawing from when it comes from some of my heroes. So there are certain people that it's like, I'm just trying to learn how to be a pastor from this guy. I really appreciate the way he leads his church. I love the way he builds his systems. I love the way that he invests into his team. I love the way that uh, his church does this or has this outreach or whatever it may be. And I'm intentionally focusing on drawing that. For others, it's just pure leadership. Man, I just love the way the guy leads. For others, it's, man, that, that is one of the best husbands I've ever seen. I want to love my wife like that. For others, it, it might be something um, even as simple as a, a, a point of excellence. Man, I just love he is... This dude is excellent. For some of them, it's like, man, I need to get shoes like that. Come on, right? I mean, I'm just crazy about it. Uh, and I think about all these things because there's another relational aspect of my life that I think a lot about, and that's who I'm pouring into. And so if God has called me to pour into other people, then it's really, really important that I'm very careful about what I'm taking in because what I take in is going to come out. It's all bonus. I didn't even expect to say all this. But I want you to think about relationships. And I want you to become intentional with relationships. And I want you to stop thinking about like, well, pastor says I should just be in relationship. No, no, no. You should be in the right relationships. You need the right people to connect to. And so there is going to be some relationships that you need to create separation in. And then there are some others that you need to draw closer to. Come on. Am I preaching to anybody? But there's a re reality about relationships that sometimes we encounter people that are difficult. They, they frustrate you. They get on your nerves. You don't like the way they think or the way they talk or the expressions or the mannerisms or what there's just something about them. And here's the, here's the part that if you, if you could get away from them, maybe you just would because it would be easy. But how many of you know sometimes you simply cannot because they're your boss? <laughs> they're your coworker. Maybe it's your parent or one of your children. Maybe it's the neighbor across the cul-de-sac. Maybe it's your husband or your wife. Come on, if that's you, you need to register right now for the Vow to Be One Marriage Weekend coming up. We're going to help you, I promise you, okay? But how many of you know that sometimes we're relationally connected to people that are hard to connect to? That they, it's like they just rub us the wrong way or some, there's friction in the relationship and the reality is like I, I can't avoid it i got to show up and do what this guy says every day. He's my boss. Or the, they sit in the cubicle right next to me. Or it's, it's like the guy that's in the passenger seat of the truck I drive at work. And I, I, I want to punch him in the face. You know what I mean? But I can't. Come on, right? I mean, can we just be real people? Sometimes dealing with other people can be something very tough. And I, so I want to speak into this today. I want to help us understand how to manage tough relationships. Let's just go a little bit further. I'm, I'm going to build a foundation and then we're going to, we're going to work off of it. Uh, I think this is really, really a strong point for us to understand. Romans chapter 3 verse 23, it says, everyone has sinned. Come on. We all fall short. All of us. So the first thing we're going to do today is keep it in perspective. Because let me be honest with you. There are things about you that other people are frustrated with. Not everybody likes your personality or the way that you think or the way that you handle situations. And I think it's really, really important for us to just start by understanding that, you know what, I don't have it all together either. It's super quiet, but this is good. It's going to help you. In fact, this week, this week, and this is where I'm just going to kind of let you into my real world, because as much as I love people, there are people that I do not like them. I don't. There are people that I really struggle 
to have relationship with. There are people that I, I don't like to be around, and there are people that fall into that classification that I cannot avoid. So let's figure out how to actually manage those relationships and how to make them work. And so this week, actually, I sent an email out to our entire staff at the church, and I said, hey, everybody, I need you to help me get better. And so what I would like to ask you to do is respond to this email. I gave them weeks uh, to respond. I gave them a deadline, and I said, I would like to give you the opportunity to speak into my life. What do I do that drives you crazy? What do you wish I would start doing? What do you wish I would stop doing? What's an area of my leadership that you wish would change and it would serve you better? And I, and I just gave them all these examples, even gave them the opportunity to answer it anonymously. We don't have a large staff. Somebody might want to be honest but be afraid to put their name on it. So I said, well, just print the thing out and drop it in my inbox, and I, don't, I won't even know who wrote it. But what I need you to do is speak into my life because I want to be better relationally. And some of you guys are like, oh my gosh, are you crazy? No, I want to get better. And, and so I, I want us to kind of slow down to the reality that we don't have it all together. And we are not perfect. And sometimes we just need to ask people who love us enough to be honest, hey, what can I get better in? What can I do differently? Can, can I tell you? I mean, like if you'll, if you'll answer or ask that question, I guarantee you people are willing to answer it. They'll give you your top 17 things that you need to adjust. I, they will. I asked my staff, I said, can you, can you just start with one? I did. Because it might hurt. It might hurt. But you, want, you, you know something? That what we're going to do today is we're just going to start with perspective. So yes, every one of us have at least one person probably in our minds right now that is difficult, that frustrates us. We don't agree. We don't always like it, whatever it is, but we can't avoid them. But before we go off on some tangent and start, start beating up on them, let's just keep it in a healthy perspective and remember, I'm not perfect either. Come on, can we do that? All right, one more verse, uh, and then we're going to move on. Romans chapter 12. Do, watch this now. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Sometimes I wish that wasn't there, but this is what the Bible says. It says, be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. Now watch this. I thank God that these words are in the Holy Bible. The absolute truth, the word of God, the living word of God, if it is possible. Thank you for setting me free. If it's possible, and watch this, this is where we're going to focus on right, right here. And as far as it depends on you, everybody say you. Come on, let's try it one more time. We're just, let's just say it together. As far as it depends on you. Who's the Bible talking about when it says you? So here's, here's where we're coming from today. We are going to, we are going to approach this topic of, of difficult people, like this relationship is tough. I, I just don't know how much longer I can do this. But what we're going to do is we're going to come to it from the lens that I don't have it all together. And you know what? Instead of me praying, wishing, hoping, and longing that they would change, I'm going to find out what I need to change. Now listen, I don't think this is the most popular message I'm ever going to preach. I'm not sure this is a message that you want to preach if you want to grow your church. But I do think it's the kind of message you preach if you want to grow you. And so let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. That, hey, you know what? I don't have it all together, and I'm not perfect. So the, the question is, if I've, Pastor, if I've got these difficult relationships, I mean, if I, if I, if I live with them, and, and I, I want to kill them every day, but I live with them, I've got to figure out how to make it work. So for some of us, that may be real. Uh, maybe, again, we're married to them. It's, it's a, a child. It's a parent. Maybe it's the next-door neighbor. It's your coworker, but you're always with them. But I need to figure out how to, as far as it depends on me, I need to live at peace with everybody, so how do I do it? We're, gonna, we're just going to walk this out together. I'm going to give you four things today, just four. Uh, I would love for you to write them down again if you're a note taker. Uh, you might want to write some additional notes just in some blank lines or a margin somewhere that can help you, but I, but I want to give us four steps to walking out how to deal with difficult relationships, relationships that are tough. Uh, the first one is this. Um, this is probably the hardest one, honestly. I want to encourage all of us, that, oh, there it is, that we're going to do it God's way. We need to do things God's way. And, and I recognize, by the way, that not everybody in this room is a Christ follower. So I, like, I get that. I understand that there, there is the high potential because of a growing church that there are people in the room that's like, hey, bro, I'm not even a Christian. I'm just kicking the tires. I, I'm trying to determine if this is even real or right for me. Can, can I just make a bold and true statement that God's way works? Yeah. Amen. 
And I'm going to preach from that context because I'm convinced. I don't think you could convince me otherwise. So even if you're not in a relationship with Jesus, I'm actually going to give you the opportunity to be here in just a few moments. But I'm going to preach from the context that we're going to do it God's way because God's way works. The problem is God's way isn't easy. (laughs) He says stuff like, you've heard the law that says, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But Jesus says these words, but I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Come on, how many of y'all know that's not the easiest thing to do? How many of you guys, every time somebody cuts you off in traffic, your first reaction is to pray for them? Where are you at? If that's you, please see me after this service. I need to learn. I need to learn. I mean, some of you guys get so frustrated in traffic, right? Like everybody on the street is out to get you. That's what you think they woke up this morning and said, I'm going to go ruin his life in traffic. That's what I'm going to do today. And and we take it all personally. You know what I'm saying? We get frustrated. We want to start waving at people. You know what I mean? You want to like peel that banana? Y'all know what I'm talking about. (laughs) Put it away. Because it can be tough. It can be tough. And I don't know that our first reaction for people that that are cruel to us, hurtful to us, that don't consider us, that don't really care about us, I don't know that the first reaction is love. I don't know that the first reaction is prayer, but God's way is completely counterintuitive to the way that we're naturally wired. And so if if I'm going to find peace in tough relationships, it's really important that I do it God's way. And so I'm going to have to walk it out in in ways like showing love to them, praying for them. And verse 45 says, in that way, watch this, you'll be acting as true children of the Father. In other words, he's saying, hey kids... This is how we do it. Some of y'all got the song. This is how we do it. Yeah, yeah. Some of y'all got that. But this is what he's saying. He's saying, hey, hey, everybody in, in my house, this is how we treat people. This is how we treat people that are tough. We show love to them. And we pray for them. And it's hard to do that. And I understand that it's hard to do that. But you know what? I'm going to just have the right perspective that, you know, I'm not perfect. All of us have fallen short. And, you know, the truth is that that I could probably grow in this somehow. And so how can I find ways to show love to someone that's not lovable? You know what? Could I grip my teeth and just pray for that person? And listen, you might have to grow in your prayer. You know what I mean? You might be praying like some of the Psalms. You know what I mean? Like smash the teeth of the wicked, Lord. Just (laughs) smash their teeth. It might start like that. I don't know. But maybe it'll grow into God just... Just bless them today. I, God, would you just do something good to them? I don't know. I don't know. And it might have to start that way until eventually God will grow us into a place where we just say, God, I just pray that you'll help that person. Maybe, maybe, they're, going, maybe they're going through something that, that I don't see or understand. And maybe some of the expression of who they are comes from a deep hurt within their life. And then all of a sudden, if we can learn to pray for them, I think we can grow in empathy for people. And then when we begin to grow in empathy for people, you know, it's like the, the dude that's, that's just cutting in and out of traffic. And, you know, he's making everybody mad. This guy's going to kill somebody. And where are all the police now? Where are y'all at right now? Right? You're frustrated or whatever. I mean, maybe he's not trying to be a jerk. Maybe he's trying to get somewhere because he got some emergency phone call and he needs to respond quickly to something that's going on, right? I mean, maybe that's true. Now, it probably isn't, but it'll help you. But if I can learn to just do it God's way, then maybe God can change my heart toward tough relationships. Maybe God can change my heart toward difficult people. Are you with me this morning? Uh, Another step, we'll just kind of move through them uh, really as quickly and efficiently as possible, but uh, I want to encourage you to always show honor. Always show honor to the people around you. I told you I was going to be uh, like an open book today. Uh, this week, I'm, so, so Wednesday is my message prep day. Uh, I work from home. I like to, uh, I'm very, I'm weird. I have all kind of weird things that I do, but, it, but I'm, I have a certain rhythm and a flow that I like to keep on a Wednesday. And so uh, Wednesday, I'm, I'm at my house. I'm preparing a message to preach to our church and you know, I'm going to talk about these tough relationships, and, and I'm getting prepared, and I just had to stop. Like, I, I had to stop preparing my message, and I had to go to my email, <laughs> and I had to type out an email to apologize to two people. I couldn't even finish preparing the message before I decided, you know what, 
just yesterday, yesterday, like on Tuesday, I did not show honor in my speech towards somebody. And I can't even, I can't, with a, like a pure conscience, I can't even put this point in our notes and not do something about what I did. And so here I had this, um, had this moment some, some time ago. You know, I'm a pastor, right? And, and everybody has ideas on how they think everything ought to go or, or whatever. And I'm, I promise you people, let, they'll let you know what they think. I mean, they'll just tell you. And it wasn't all this long ago that I had this, I had this conversation with some people. They said, hey, can we meet with you? We'd like to talk with you a little bit. I said, Abs- absolutely. I set up the meeting. I just felt like that you know, they had served uh, on teams and been really engaged, part, a part of our church. And just uh, so I said, hey, let's, let's talk about it. What's going on? And they just began to express to me frustration and this, and I don't like that, and this thing and that thing. And uh, I'm going to be honest with you. It was about a 90-minute conversation where I felt like they just, just like kicked me and then said, but we love you. You know what I mean? Like, like, it's really not you. And I'm like, is it not me? Because it doesn't, everything you're saying sounds like, and anyway, and, and just, it, I'm, it, it was hurtful. It hurt. And then they left our, our church. And again, this is probably not church growth conversation I'm having right now. They left our church. And honestly, I think it was for the better. I don't know that our church was the best fit for them. I, I actually think the church they're in now is, is much better a fit for them because it's a killer church. It's awesome. And it fits them really well. But I'm, can I tell you something? It hurt for days. It wasn't like, yeah, it is. Like, it, somehow, logically, I understood it was better. But in my heart, it really hurt really bad. Is it okay if I'm this real? Yeah. Yeah. And so, for, I'm talking about for days. It was, it was like I couldn't even think. My, like, it was like it knocked me off my rails. And then you begin to, begin to question everything. And like, man, like, how, how good a leader are you? And man, are they right about any of that? And all these things start running through your mind. And so uh, what I recognized on Tuesday is when I was in this conversation with some people and we were talking about something, that I threw out some comments. I never said any names. Uh, I, I never pointed back to certain specifics. But I threw out some comments that were uh, sarcastically pointed to those people. And the worst part was the two people that I was in conversation with knew about the meeting, knew their names. So I have to put an email together to say, you know something? Not only should a Christ follower not talk like that, but certainly not the lead pastor. I know y'all say cry and all that stuff, but I can't stand it. It drives me nuts about myself. And I just had to send an email and I had to say, I need to... I need to tell you guys I'm sorry for not being honorable towards someone else because I didn't have to say it. It was useless to say. I did it to get a cheap laugh, and it came from a place of hurt in me. They weren't the issue. I was. You see, you see where I'm going with this? And so what, what I had to learn the hard way is, you know what? We should always show honor because I would hate for anyone to ever choose to leave this church and fear that they're going to be talked about negatively when they do. The, the Bible says love each other. I, I love these two words with genuine affection. G- genuinely. Love people like authentically. And in a way that is real, if we do it God's way, then we learn to show honor. And when we learn to show honor, love becomes more genuine. And then take delight in honoring each other. Y'all remember that part that your mom used to say, if you don't have anything nice to say, for some of us, that'll set us free. If we would just learn, you know what, that it's not even worth saying. It doesn't help them. It's not going to help me. It's not going to help anybody else. It's, it's just unhealthy. And if we can see negative talk, no thank you, if we can see negative talk as, as being unhealthy, 
then it'll help to curve our, our language a little bit. It'll help us to show honor because oftentimes the best way that I can show honor is to say nothing. I just won't say anything. And Pastor, what do you think about that church across town? And if I don't think it's a great church, you know what I say? Hey, I don't know much about them. I am not going to speak into that because it's not honorable. It isn't godly. It's not Christ-like. So I, wanna do, I just want to do things God, God's way. I always want to show honor. Number three is uh, I, I want to set some healthy boundaries. And I think this can help a lot of people. I think this can actually help loads of you in this room because um, even though uh, I want to do it God's way and, and, and that's hard. So, so I'm going to like show love and kindness. I'm going to pray for difficult people. Um, even though I'm going to show honor, which sometimes means I'm just going to say less. Uh, or at least I'm going to say nice things. I'm just going to make sure that it's not negative talk. I'm going to keep it, I'm gonna keep it in, a, in a context that's honorable and godly. But there are times in certain relationships that we need to learn what boundaries to set in our relationships. And, and, let, me, and here's, let me help you with this a little bit. I want to I say this, that sometimes I cannot help. I have to interact with this person because of whatever reason, because of whatever association that we have that I can't avoid them. We're related or we, we work together, or whatever the case for you may be. But what I would like to encourage you to learn how to do is to set healthy boundaries around those relationships. And so here, here's what, and I could get really, really deep here. I feel like I'm, I'm real complicated, but you have to learn how to measure the kind of relationship that you're in. Find out where are the trip wires that set that person off? Or what are the things that I might be doing that cause them to do the thing that drives me nuts? Where can I just stop crossing certain lines that create healthier approach or a healthier approach to our relationship? And so this is true for me too. Again, there are people that I, that I interact with that are hard for me to interact with. And I love people. I find myself saying all the time, we'll be talking about somebody and all the time, all the time, I'll be like, man, I like that guy. But reality is I say that about everybody because I truly believe that everybody has potential and everybody has an upside and there is strengths in all of it. Like I'm convinced of that. The difference is that sometimes it's like, I just, I just don't want to do it with you because like we just don't work together. And so what I've learned to do is just to create lines to say, you know what, uh, with this person, even though we might be connected relationally and I'm, you know what, I might have to have interaction with this person, I'm going to find ways to create healthy boundaries so that I don't ever trip them into frustration. So what can I be doing? See, sometimes dealing with difficult people is more about you than it is them. So what can I be doing to, to avoid the things that are bothering me? Or, or what, like when, when they speak, so I used to work with someone that was so negative. I, I, I can't even explain the, toxic, the toxicity of the relationship because of the person's negativity. It was exhausting. It was horrible. I couldn't stand it. It was like, it was like dr being drained all day long. And so what I had to figure out how to do is how to say just positive things. I would have to just say a, a good thing about the bad thing that this person was complaining about. I had to determine like what boundaries. You know what? We just can't hang out socially. We just never. It's not, it's not anything that's, I just can't do it. It's a, you're enough at work. I'm going to draw healthy boundaries, create lines. I'm not coming to the barbecue. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever it is. It's not why I didn't come to your barbecue, by the way. Love you guys. I'm not even talking about you. All right? Um, <laughs> in real time, I was like, uh-oh. Uh-oh. I need to learn some healthy boundaries. Some people, you can't interact with them certain ways because the exchange rate is wrong. So they value something differently than you value it. And as soon as you start exchanging those things, now you're in debt to them because you didn't even know that they had a higher value on your time than you did. Is that making sense? So transactionally, I have to be careful with the way I interact with people, especially those that are toxic to me, because I can't find myself in debt to you. So I'll just draw lines that, yeah, 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 no thanks. I appreciate it. No, thank you. No, I know you can give it to somebody else. I don't, I don't need, whatever the case may be, I hope it's help. And I know that I'm being a little bit ambiguous in some of this in, in certain ways, but I'm doing it just hoping that the Holy Spirit helps you understand boundaries and lines that you can create in your own heart, in your own relationships that maintain health, that reduce friction, that stops fights, you know? So like, you know, when dad's overbearing and driving you crazy, you're like, oh my gosh, I wish he would shut up about it, you know? Maybe you've, you've learned that rather than, rather than when he's hot, try to make my point, I will just say, yes, sir, I'm gonna grip my teeth, 
I'm going to pray for him that he trips and falls in the garage, you know, whatever, and, right? I'm, I'm, that's not good. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, but, but, you know, I'm just going to grip my teeth. I'm going to show honor in this moment. And then maybe when he's, maybe when he's in, a, in a good mood, I'll approach him and say, hey, can I just talk to you about something? Because I've learned the boundaries. If I say it now, we're in a fight. If I, if I say it later, perhaps then. And then you need to learn how to measure that. Maybe you find the right exchange time. You find the right... Am, am, I, am I helping anybody? I, I hope I am. Uh, really quickly as we close this thing, I'm going to show you a story from the Bible. I've used this before. Uh, some of you might see it as familiar, but in Acts, there's this really cool story I, wanna, I just want to read to you. The Bible says sometime later, Paul and Silas, or, or excuse me, Paul said to Barnabas, let's go back and visit the believers in all the towns where we preached the word of the Lord, and see how they're doing. So these guys are just advancing the gospel, man. They're just getting, they're just growing the church as we know it today. I mean, they are fired up about Jesus, who's already been uh, been crucified and buried and risen. He's ascended to the Father and the church. I mean, as we know it today, it's just growing rapidly, and these guys are a major, major part of it. Uh, and they're saying, hey, like we've done all this great stuff. We've planted all these churches. We get all these little families going and these, and these life groups are meeting. Come on, I'm sure they were doing small groups and the whole deal. Let's go check on them. Let's just go back and see how everybody's doing. And so Barnabas wanted to take John, notice this now, also called Mark. All right, so if you're a super note taker, just circle that if you would or underline it. But he wanted to, Barnabas said, let's take Mark. But watch what happens, but Paul did not think it was wise to take him because he had deserted them in Pamphylia, and if I'm jacking that up, just correct me later, and had not continued with them in the work, okay? Y'all tracking? So, so Barnabas is like, let's take this guy, and Paul's like, you know, I don't think that we should, and so watch what happens. They had such a sharp disagreement that they drew some lines they created boundaries. They parted company. Hey, you know what? I don't know if this is working out. I mean, I love you. I, mean, I know you're my brother in Christ and all that. But dude, I don't know if we can see eye to eye on this one. All right, so I think we should part company. So Barnabas took Mark and sailed for Cyprus. But Paul chose Silas and left. And they go in these different directions. I am so thankful for God's word. And I'm so thankful that when I look into God's word, I can see examples of people that don't agree. I can see examples of people that have tense relationships. I can see examples of stuff that's like, I, I, that I experience today. And so what did they do? They just, they just said, hey, let's create a healthy boundary. I actually think you can go serve people, but you go serve those people. And we can still serve people. We're going to go serve these people. Okay, I, I, I lead you with this story to set us up for my final point, I want to encourage you to always have an open heart. All, like, have an open heart. All right, now once you've written it, and once you've got it, like, you know point number four, always have an open heart. I'm going to show you why I'm going to give you this point, all right? We're going to fast forward in time. People are still doing ministry. Guys are still advancing the gospel, still building churches, still starting small groups like they're, like the church is just growing like crazy. And now these guys have created this leadership pipeline. And, and so now Paul is raising up pastors over. So he's starting churches, raising up a leader, putting leaders in these churches and saying, hey, go do it, man, reach your city. And then he would go to another city and he would do the same thing. They would start a church, raise up a leader, man, go reach your city. I mean, exactly the stuff that we are seeing happening to, in today in the church today, they, they were starting all this. So have an open heart because Timothy, all right, in this letter, now, now context, all right, some of you are trying to read ahead on me. Uh, Timothy is this pastor that's being risen up by Paul. So, so he's this young pastor that Paul is, is raising up in leadership. So Paul is writing a letter to Timothy. <laughs> Look at me, I just threw it right back. Timothy, watch what he says in his letter. Please come as soon as you can. Demas has deserted me because he loves the things uh, of this life and has gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia and Titus has gone to Dalmatia. Great dogs there. They look awesome. Um, that's such a preacher joke, you know? 
Thanks for the courtesy laugh, though. It makes me feel good. Um, so all this stuff is going on. All this logistical stuff is going on. That This thing's going on here, there, and the other, right? Watch, though. Watch what, I want you to watch what Paul says. Now, Paul earlier said, I don't think we should take Mark. I don't think it's a good idea. And he went on with Barnabas. Remember that? Watch, though. Well, this is Paul talking. Only Luke is with me. Watch what he says. Bring Mark. Check this out. It's the same Mark. Hey, you know what? Bring Mark. Why would he bring Mark? Because he will be helpful to me in my ministry. Oh, I love this so much. I love this so much. Because at one point in this journey, Paul was like, nah. Dude's not qualified. I don't like his personality. I can't stand his shoes. I don't know what made him not think that bringing Mark was a good idea. I don't know. But he was like, it's not good. And then this huge disagreement between these two guys and this friction becomes in a relationship that was about the church. How many of y'all ever been in a church that had some rough relationships inside of it? And they part company. They draw healthy boundaries. You keep doing your thing. I'm going to keep doing my thing. And they go off. And then sometime later, Paul says, hey, by the way, things are changing. All kind of stuff's going on. Bring Mark with you. Like, he even said, come as quick as you can. Oh, and bring Mark. Here's my question. Who changed? Was it Paul? Or was it Mark? I don't know. I just know that somehow Paul now sees value in Mark that he didn't see before. And here's what I want to say to you. Listen very carefully. Is that for some of you, and this is very specific to your context, but some of you need to open the door back up for the opportunity for a relationship to be reconnected. So you've written someone off forever. I'll never talk to them again. I'll never show up to that family gathering ever again. I will never let that person do that to me ever again. And you've written someone completely off, but God is saying, hey, would you just have an open heart? Because listen to me very carefully. God can change anybody, including you. Who changed? Paul? Mark? Hmm. It doesn't tell us. But I love the fact that Paul said, you know what? My heart is open. I will not write you off. I will not say good riddance. I will not say never. And I've done it. I've done it. I've said never again. Never again. This, that, the other. This is not happening to me. But you know something? God can change people's hearts. He can change people's lives. Do you believe that? And so how am I going to deal with these tough relationships. I'm going to do it God's way. The hard stuff. That's what I'm going to do. I'm always going to show honor. So when people are bantering about the boss in the break room, I'm leaving. And you know what? You can make fun of me if you want to and think that I'm the weirdo or call me a a brown noser or a suck up or whatever. You know what? But I've just determined I'm going to show some honor. I'm not going there anymore. It's just not who I am because Christ is changing my life. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to show some honor. That's what I'm going to do. You know what? Sometimes I need to learn I'm going to set some healthy boundaries. I just can't go there. I'm not going to interact with that person that way. But you know what? Who knows what God could do in the future? And maybe one day I can go across those boundaries. Maybe I can change the lines because God might change me enough for that to be okay. God might change them enough for that to be okay. And I just want to encourage you with whatever difficult relationships you are facing right now, Let's just go about it God's way. Let's invite God into the situation. Let's take the tough steps, do the hard things, become less popular, draw boundaries, create separation, whatever it might be for you, and then just always say, you know what, I believe in the power of God to change people's lives because he changed mine. I believe he can change theirs. I believe he can change anybody's. My heart is open to what God might do in them. Come on, every head bowed, every eye closed. I've spoken too long already. Some of you, just by listening to this message, have started to gain a belief that perhaps God could change your heart. Man, maybe God could change 
me. And I'm just here to tell you, he absolutely can. So what I want to do is give you the opportunity to start a relationship with him today. I'd like to give you the opportunity to encounter Jesus right now. Can I tell you something? All of your relationships will get better if you start this relationship today. And so every person in this room, everybody watching or listening to this message online, I want to just ask you to evaluate your heart for a second. Where are you in your stance with God? And if, it's, if this is your day, you say, you know what, today's the day I'm going to know God, great. Then I want to introduce you to his son, Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And nobody can come to the Father, speaking of God, except by me. So I just want to invite you to say a prayer with me. I, I'm, I'm going to make it easy on you. I'm going to say it for you. I just want you to repeat this prayer after me. If you're in this room, I, all I want you to do is decide and pray. If you're driving down the road listening to a podcast right now, just decide and pray. If you're watching online, just decide and pray. I want you to say, dear Jesus, come on, everybody in the room, dear Jesus, I give you my life, all of it. Come into my heart. Forgive me my sin. Wash me. Cleanse me. Make me new. All that I am is yours. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's give God some praise, everybody, for those that made that decision. That's awesome.